Okay then guys, today we're taking a look at Lusat's Glintstone Armor, and this one is a lengthy quest indeed, although if you have already got your hands on the Azur's Glintstone Armor, then you can skip to the timestamp that is in the description, as you don't really have to go and do a lot. But if you haven't seen that video and you haven't done it, well you're going to have to endure the rest of this quest line. Like, subscribe, and let's get into it. So we're going to be starting off right here. You guys are going to be able to see on the map that we are going to want to start off at this location at the Waypoint Ruins Cellar. So we're going to head on over there and go and speak to the lady herself. Now she is going to start up a quest line and that is going to send you to this direction right here. We're going to head up to the academy in the schoolhouse classroom and this is going to be where you want to start off. So follow the location that we get to and we can dive straight into the next bit. Now this pit right here, you want to drive down to the bottom via the platform. Don't jump off at any given section. It will sort of like fold and drop you. Now once you do eventually get dropped down to the bottom, there is going to be a very strong ad there. You want to avoid him at all costs and head on down to the bottom where you'll find a nice little talisman. Apparently it's quite good, but I'm not a massive fan. Now, once you have got that, you are going to want to get killed by this boss ad right here, and it needs to be via this animation. It can't be via anything else, you have to get swallowed up, but don't worry, you don't die, you get sent through to this location right here at Volcano Manor. You're going to follow the route that we take down to the bottom, and we're going to go from there. Okay, so right here we have got a grey site right at the top here on the right hand side. You are going to want to stop off there. It's going to be quite important because this next bit is going to be where the boss is. So we're going to follow the location that we are right now. And if you guys are sort of like a long range utility person, then this is going to be really easy for you because there's actually a small cheese spot which enables you to not get hit by these guys and make sure that you can just pop off a load of range spells or bow and arrows or whatever it is you are using. If you are a melee guy, well, this is going to take a little bit longer. So feel free to come back once you have done this they are no joke Okay, so you've taken these guys out and the next step is going to be a grace site which is going to be just down the cave doorway. And once we've got through that part, we are going to want to follow the next direction that we're going to down here. Please be careful as there is going to be some very steep drops down here and it's going to be a bit of a nightmare if you do fall off. Anyhow, we're going to get to the grey site and then we're going to go from there. This next part is going to be a little bit tedious, mainly because there are a lot of hot geysers, so you want to be very careful. Make sure that you rest at this grey spot as it means it's, that it's going to be a nice little safe point for you guys in case you do get taken out. So we're going to want to go in this direction right here down at the crevice and we are going to be careful of the floors because the geysers are extremely hot and you'll see here they do impact you quite dramatically. So make sure you stay to the sides and don't mess around inside of the waters because the likelihood is, is you're going to get scorched into next week. Eventually you will find a small torch lights up and you want to head up there. This is going to be a nice easy part and you are going to be able to stick a couple of swordstone keys into it which is going to get you a next grey site. Now you can come back here and do this one and it's going to give you some tasty loot as always but we are abusing this for the grey site and the grey site alone at Sheepwater Cave. So once we have done that we want to head back out of the cave and we are going to want to head into the direction of north. Now be careful because there is a few things at the end you want to grab hold of them. Once you have done that you want to go back down here which is the northwest direction. We're going to be going along the side again being careful of the geysers on the floor because well, we already know that they're quite hot so make sure you avoid those at all costs. Thank you. 
Okay, so once you've done that, you will get to this grey site right here. And this again is going to be a nice place to make sure that you rest up in just because it's quite a distance from the next place. So we're going to jump up here and head west through all of these campsites. Now, please, again, be careful. The ads are quite strong at this point. So make sure that you are wary as you make your way through. Once we get to the lava, we are going to find that there is a magma worm dragon inside of it. Again, just avoid him and keep following the lava all the way around. And then once you get to the split side, take the left hand side and hug it through the natural pathway. You'll be able to find some gold runes and stuff here. So make sure you pick those up at the graveyard before you move on to your next task. Make your way up through this crevice right here and we are going to see right at the top, there is going to be the next location. Okay, so once you get to this bit right here, you need to be quick if you want to avoid attacking anything or being taken out. You want to draw, run all the way down to the bottom, up the end of this rock structure, and down the left-hand side where you will see a site of grace. Make sure you are quick or else the demi-human queen will take you out. So make sure you get rested and it resets the movement. Then we get to go to this place right here where we are going to obtain the first spell, the Comet Azure. That being said, we have now got the Comet Azure with a 60 intellect to obtain it. It is a little bit nutty, but this thing is pretty strong. So we're going to go in right now for the Stars of Ruins. And this is about the same quest, and it's going to take us along quite a distanced route yet again, but it's definitely worth it. So we're going to want to start off by heading back down to the Waypoint Ruins Cave and this is going to take us into the next part. Exhaust all of the dialogue options and once you have done that she is going to ask if you want to work in the journey together. You obviously want to do that so make sure you exhaust everything and she'll give you this Cillian Seal Breaker. Now this is a very important key and you are going to use it right now. Head on down to the Church of the Plague on the far right hand side of the map and follow the direction that we are going right here. Now the hole to this next cave is protected by a, an invisible boulder so if you hit it, it will go out. There will be quite a few locations inside of this cave itself that are exactly the same so make sure you rest up at the grace site and go and whack the walls that we whack to make your way through to the next part of the mission. Now be careful right here because you are going to have to scale through the crystals and you are going to have to jump down quite a large hole as far as the crystals go. You need to make sure you scale them properly. Now once you have scaled them properly and you've managed to make your way down there will be a sorcerer at the bottom. All you have to do is take that sorcerer out and you'll be able to use the key to unlock the doorway. This is quite an easy one so don't stress too much about it. Just hide behind the rock surface on the left hand side if you're a ranged character. This is going to be a lot easier obviously because these mages can be quite renowned for firing off their magic quite quickly. So once we've done that, you are going to want to go and input your key to take away this blue aluminous door, which is really pretty. I hate that we have to get rid of them. But we've used a seal breaker and that's now gone. We're going to make our way through and we get to this bit right here where we get to talk and obtain something else. Ooh, the loot is bloody amazing. And there it is, the Stars of Ruin. So from this point, we're going to want to head back over to Selene and we're going to speak to her and she's going to ask us to go and retrieve a soul that she has hidden in a different body. This is the location we're going to want to head to, the fourth church of Marika, and we are going to want to travel our way down the route that I'm taking right now till we get to an underground passage. This is going to be exactly where that hidden soul is and you can see it directly on the wall. If you have had a bit of a problem with this one, you can go to the Church of Vows and be able to go and attend your sins. Come back if you've already done that. Next up, we can go over to the main carrier manor and this is going to be a slog through because you've got to make your way through to here in the manor's lower levels. Work your way across the bridges and up towards the manor upper level and from there you can very easily make your way over to the royal grounds. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit difficult because you are actually going to face the almighty royal knight loretta and it's going to be a bit of a nightmare because she's a bit of a pain but after you have done that you can go over to rani's rise and make your way over to this next location 
Once you have got to here, you want to go out of the doorway past the dragon on the left hand side and you are going to find some ruins. In the floor there is going to be an invisible flooring which if for some of you if you jump up and down on if you are weighing enough I guess it will just open up. Now for me it did not work I actually had to swipe my sword on the floor no matter how much I jumped it did nothing. It will open up the bottom part right here and it will take you through to another room with another hidden wall directly in front of you where Salem will be waiting to talk to you. Make sure you have a conversation with her and exhaust all of the dialogue options and then it's going to send you down to the bottom right now you do have to have defeated Radan for this and you want to head on over to the main church where Jaren will generally reside although for me he was not there so if this has happened to you the doors are open and he's not sat on the chair just there then you want to head on over straight to the next location which is back where the original soul was and he will be waiting with the body and you want to again exhaust all of the dialogue options this bit right here is going to take you on to a decision making time and this is going to be over at the main academy where you do have to have the rare Lucaria main mission done so make sure you've got the rare mission done and when you go outside you're going to have a red and a gold platform. We need to pick the gold platform for the case of this quest line and we are going to take out Jaren the blood finger. By doing that, you actually obtain Jaren's main outfit, which looks pretty damn cool if I do say so. It looks pretty clever, although relatively useless to a degree. Head on back to the middle and speak to Solene, and she will give you, after you have exhausted all of the dialogue options, she will give you an awesome looking weapon. Now this is just a badded bonus, and we're getting right close to the end of this now. But you will see right here we obtain the Glinstone Chris, and this is quite a nice little weapon to obtain if you haven't seen it before. So once you've done that we are going to head back to where Azur was standing and this is where you are going to obtain the Azur armor set nice and puckeroony. Next up we are going to want to go ahead and grab our hands on the Lusats armor set. So we're going to leave that area and we are going to head back over to Sellers hideaway at which point we are going to make our way back to where Lusat was actually laid. So we're going to take that route right now and we'll see you in a sec. And there it is, the Lusats armor set, nice and amazing. And here is the stats on screen for you guys so you can see exactly what it is that you're getting your hands on. And like I said, if you pop on the helmet, it will give Lusats Primeval Current Sorceries a additional buff, but at the cost of FP consumption. So there it is. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, slap the beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe with post notifications turned on. Thank you so much for all your support and for being absolutely amazing. But as always, up until the next time, I'll see you in the clouds.